Summary, The Miracles of Your Mind, Dr. Joseph Murphy. Book link click here The mind has two parts, the objective mind and the subjective mind. The objective mind deals with the external world through the five senses. The subjective mind operates below the level of awareness and is the seat of emotions. The subjective mind is amenable to suggestion and is controlled by the objective mind. It accepts all suggestions without argument and turns them into reality. Whatever is accepted as valid by the objective mind is impressed on the subjective mind. The subjective mind perceives by intuition rather than through the five senses. It has clairvoyant and clairaudient abilities and can apprehend information beyond the reach of the five senses. The interaction between the objective and subjective minds is critical to the power of prayer and meditation. The objective mind gives orders and suggestions which the subjective mind follows and turns into reality. Feel and repetition convey ideas and beliefs to the subjective mind. Whatever is valid will be accepted and made manifest by the subjective mind. Examples of how the subjective mind follows the orders and beliefs of the objective mind, even when illogical or unrealistic. The mind must be guarded since the subjective mind will follow any directions. To use the mind for healing, one must relax, immobilize attention, and affirm the healing power of the mind while visualizing that body's healing. Negative and resentful thoughts will neutralize the benefits. Consistency and persistence are key. In summary, the subjective mind is the engine room following the orders of the captain, which is the objective mind. The ship goes where the captain directs, even onto the rocks. The heart corresponds to the subjective mind in ancient teachings. Your mind has two parts, the conscious and subconscious mind. The subconscious mind controls your body functions and sensations. The symptoms of diseases can be induced in hypnotized people through suggestion. This shows that the cause of diseases is in the mind. Similarly, healing can also happen through the mind. All forms of healing, whether modern or alternative medicine, religious or spiritual, work through the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is the only healer. It knows how to heal a wound or cure a disease. Healing requires faith, a positive attitude and expectancy of getting well. This activates the healing power of the subconscious mind. The method or technique used for healing does not matter. Anything that can change your mind and induce faith and optimism will heal. The subconscious mind responds to any method that can instill faith and expectancy. Denying the existence of disease may seem absurd but it can work for some people because when the conscious mind is relaxed, the subconscious mind can be impacted through suggestion. What matters is activating the subconscious mind through faith and expectancy. No one healing method is superior or uses a different power. All methods work through the activation of faith in the subconscious mind. Each method may claim its theory is correct, but faith is the process underlying all healing. The main ideas are that the mind has power over the body, the subconscious mind is the healer, faith and positive expectancy are required for healing, and the method or technique used does not matter as long as it can instill faith and activate the subconscious mind. The summary highlights how the subconscious mind and faith are ordinary in healing. Here is a summary of the key ideas. The subconscious mind controls many bodily functions, influencing health and healing. It responds to beliefs, suggestions, and feelings the conscious mind accepts as accurate. To harness the power of the subconscious mind, you must gain its cooperation by convincing it of what you want it to do. Merely stating the opposite of the problem, for example I have no headache, often does not work because the subconscious mind does not accept contradictions easily. It is better to state that the problem is passing away or changing for the better. The subconscious mind responds best to positive, repetitive suggestions, especially right before sleep. Affirm that the body and mind are becoming whole, pure, and perfect. Focus on the solution, not the problem. Do not give names or constantly talk about ailments, as this can strengthen them in the subconscious mind. Instead, become a good mental surgeon and cut them off from attention and fear. A technique to impress the subconscious mind is to purposefully pass over a request from the conscious to the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind will then take over the request and work to bring it about. Have belief, faith, and expectancy that the subconscious mind can heal. However, do not try to coerce or force it. The subconscious mind knows more about healing the body than the conscious mind. Trust in its ability to restore health and balance. In summary, the theory is that the subconscious mind significantly influences the body and health. By using targeted techniques, especially positive suggestion and focused attention, we can harness the power of the subconscious mind and direct it to improve our health and well-being. The key is impressing the subconscious mind with the desired outcome, avoiding contradiction and criticism, and having faith in the mind's abilities. This summarizes the theory and methods presented in the passage. 
The alcoholic has a mental illness and needs mental healing. The problem drinker cannot drink normally and excessively for long periods. The alcoholic claims to be seized by an uncontrollable passion for drinking periodically. The alcoholic has established a habit and subjective pattern in the subconscious mind through repeated acts of drinking. The alcoholic fears yielding to the craving again, which suggests to the subconscious mind that he will drink again. The alcoholic's imagination and the images impressed on the subconscious mind lead him to return to drinking. He imagines drinking bouts that then come to fruition. The first drink awakens the sleeping giant of memory and desire in the subconscious, leading to uncontrolled drinking. Imagining the first drink starts the whole cycle again, demonstrating the power of an idea accepted in the subconscious mind. The cure involves expelling the idea of drinking from the mind and implanting thoughts of freedom and sobriety. Auto-suggestion, conditioning, and group therapy can help achieve this. The alcoholic uses a lot of effort and willpower to overcome the habit, but this only strengthens the habit due to the law of reversed effort. The more effort is used, the more powerless one feels. Effort invariably leads to the opposite of the desired results. The first drink triggers the alcoholic due to habit and conditioning. The subconscious mind accepts the strongest of two contradictory ideas. The idea that one is powerless dominates the mind. The law of reversed effort means that when your desire and imagination conflict, the imagination wins. Trying hard through willpower leads to the opposite result. This is because the belief in failure is stronger than the belief in success. To overcome alcoholism, one must get the cooperation of the subconscious mind. The subconscious accepts one's dominant feelings, beliefs and convictions. Entering a sleepy state reduces effort and allows ideas to be implanted in the subconscious. The best times are before sleep and after waking. An example is given of an alcoholic who would repeat I am completely free from this habit, sobriety and peace of mind reign supreme before sleep to recondition his mind. After three weeks, he lost the desire to drink. When urges came up, he would repeat them aloud. Another example is an alcoholic who imagined his daughter congratulating him on his freedom and sobriety. He would relax, get drowsy and focus on this mental picture to impress it on his subconscious. This reconditioned his mind. He knew persistence would lead to success. One is that the conscious mind is like a camera, and the subconscious is like a sensitive plate. Mental pictures must be developed in the dark room of the subconscious. Focusing attention and mental absorption help with this. The alcoholic is a prisoner of their own making, bound by beliefs, habits, and conditioning. Admitting the issue is the first step. The desire to be free is 50% of the solution. Reconditioning the mind through the subconscious is critical. Beliefs and habits condition the subconscious. Good thoughts lead to good results, and evil thoughts to wrong results. The alcoholic must build the idea of freedom into their subconscious. The alcoholic should focus on freedom and peace of mind. By concentrating on these positive ideas, he will generate positive emotions and feelings which his subconscious mind will accept. Whatever is accepted by the subconscious mind will materialize. Continuing the habit of alcoholism will only lead to deterioration and decay. The alcoholic should say no to the urge and realize that his subconscious mind supports him. Even though it will be difficult, he should imagine the joy and freedom that sobriety will bring. This is using the law of substitution, substituting positive thoughts for negative ones. The alcoholic's thinking controls his actions, whether he realizes it or not. He must discipline his mind to think constructively. One way is through imaginary conversations, like Gouda did. There are many reasons for alcoholism, like resentment, guilt, or low self-esteem. The real reason is negative thinking leading to emotional maladjustment. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Excuses for drinking, like tragedy or lack of money, are not the real reasons. The real reason is negative thinking. The alcoholic tries to escape some sense of bondage caused by his thinking. Promises to quit drinking are meaningless without knowing how to access one's inner power. The alcoholic lacks confidence and poise. The technique for overcoming alcoholism is, a, get still and quiet the mind. Enter a relaxed, receptive state. b, repeat a simple phrase like sobriety and peace of mind are mine now, and I give thanks over and over to avoid wandering thoughts. c, this conditions the subconscious mind to accept sobriety and peace of mind. Whatever the subconscious accepts will materialize. D. This is an age-old technique, as a man imagines and feels, so is he. Here is a summary of the key points. Most people lack financial security because they do not know how to tap into the power of their subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is an inexhaustible storehouse of wealth and ideas. A poverty mindset leads to poverty-stricken conditions. A mind filled with ideas of wealth attracts prosperity. It is your natural state to be wealthy and have all your needs met. 
Merely affirming I am prosperous will not work if you do not believe it. Your subconscious mind only accepts what you genuinely believe. Use an affirmation like by day and by night I am being prospered in all of my interests to avoid inner conflict. Repeat the words wealth and success to impress the ideas of prosperity onto your subconscious mind. Feel the feeling of being wealthy and successful. Your subconscious mind gives you compound interest in your mental deposits. Deposit thoughts of prosperity, success, wealth and peace into your subconscious every morning. Do not neutralize them with fearful thoughts later on. Money represents prosperity and freedom. Do not criticize or condemn money. Develop a mindset that money circulates freely in your life, meeting all your needs. Love the idea of wealth until it becomes a deep-seated belief that what you love increases in your life. What you criticize fades away. See money flowing into your life and flowing from you in endless circulation. If money is scarce, you have yet to convince your subconscious mind that you will always have plenty. Do not believe hard work and struggle are the only paths to wealth. Develop a mindset that wealth comes to you quickly and frequently. In summary, impress your subconscious mind with ideas of wealth, prosperity and abundance through belief, mental imagery and feeling. A circulation of wealth on the mental plane will manifest as financial abundance in your life. The key to solving marital problems or finding the right partner is using your subconscious mind correctly. Refrain from dwelling on why you cannot find the right partner or have a happy marriage. Fill your mind with positive thoughts and beliefs to attract your ideal partner and build a healthy relationship. To find the right partner, impress your subconscious mind with the qualities you desire in a partner, such as honesty, kindness, loyalty, faithfulness, and prosperity. Repeat these qualities often with feeling and belief. Your subconscious mind will then attract a partner who embodies those qualities according to the law of attraction. You attract what you feel to be true in your subconscious mind. Relax. Close your eyes, and visualize the type of partner you want. Repeat the qualities you desire with the belief that your subconscious mind is now attracting such a person into your life. Persist in this practice and you will attract the right partner for you. To improve your marriage, again, do not focus on the negatives or reasons why you cannot have a happy marriage. Focus on the positive. Use visualization and affirmation to see your marriage as strong, harmonious, and successful. Repeat words like happiness, joy, harmony and prosperity with feeling. Your subconscious mind will respond by aligning conditions with your mental image and beliefs. See your partner with new eyes and appreciate the good in them. Be loving, kind, generous and the qualities you admire will blossom in them. Do not try to change your partner, change your attitude toward them. Your partner will change accordingly. Forgive past hurts and start afresh. Be receptive to loving thoughts from your partner as well. Love begets love. Use the powers of your subconscious mind to banish old negative patterns and create new positive patterns in your marriage. Marital bliss depends on the thoughts in your mind. Focus on the qualities and characteristics you want in a partner. The subconscious mind will open up opportunities to meet someone with those qualities. Have a sincere desire to give love, be devoted, and cooperate. Be open to receiving love in return. Marriage should be based on love, honesty, sincerity, kindness, and integrity. Do not marry for money, status or security. Your security comes from using your mind correctly. A marriage requires two partners to be united in love, freedom, and respect. What you accept mentally is what you will experience physically. Ending a marriage mentally by being resentful, hateful or critical is like committing adultery. Your thoughts and feelings matter most. To maintain a happy marriage, focus on the mental attitude that first attracted you to your partner. Forgive quickly and avoid long-lasting resentment or hostility. Do not discuss marital problems with relatives or neighbors. Handle issues privately with a counselor. Discussing problems with others will make the situation worse. Do not try to change your partner. Accept them as they are. You can only change yourself. Adjustments are fine, but focus on yourself, not your partner. To solve marital problems, decide what you want, then focus your mind on it. Your subconscious will respond and help create it. Ignore the current circumstances and conditions. If one partner wants a divorce and the other does not, the outcome depends on which view prevails in the mind. The one with the strongest conviction and most profound mental acceptance will win out. The marital problem described can be solved by directing thought to the desired solution and trusting the subconscious mind to resolve the issue. Relying on wisdom, intuition, love, goodwill and kindness can heal the relationship. The subconscious mind can achieve what the conscious mind cannot. So turning requests over to the subconscious before sleep can reveal answers upon waking. Achieving a relaxed, 
meditative state helps the subconscious take over the problem. Visualizing the result and believing it is solved helps the subconscious find the solution. Simple, childlike faith in the subconscious mind's ability helps it provide answers. An example is locating a lost ring by speaking to the subconscious like any other person and trusting the intuitive answer received. Another example is locating a missing will by turning the request over to the subconscious before sleep. The key steps are, direct thought to the desired solution and trust the subconscious mind. Rely on wisdom, intuition, love, goodwill and kindness. Turn requests over to the subconscious mind before sleep. Relax the body and still the mind to achieve a meditative state. Visualize the result and believe the solution is already solved. Have simple, childlike faith in the subconscious mind. Speak to the subconscious like another person and trust the answers. Following these steps allows the superior wisdom and knowledge of the subconscious mind to resolve complex problems during sleep or times of relaxation when the surface mind is stilled. The subconscious can then guide one to correct solutions and answers. The student had a vivid dream of seeing the solution to his problem. As he fell asleep, his mind was seeking an answer, and his subconscious responded by revealing the answer in a dream. Our thoughts as we sleep can activate our subconscious mind. For example, if we have a problem we want to solve, we can direct our minds to the problem before sleeping. The action is our thought, and the reaction is the response from the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind responds accordingly to our thoughts. As we think about the right solution, we will feel compelled to the right choice. The subconscious mind is powerful, and will dictate our actions according to our beliefs and thoughts. We always receive guidance on what we think about the most. The subconscious mind does not judge, it simply responds to what we tell it. So if we dwell on negative thoughts, we will receive negative guidance. If we think positive and peaceful thoughts, we will receive positive guidance. To overcome fear, we must face what we fear and impress positive thoughts on our subconscious mind. By repeating peaceful thoughts and visualizing feeling confident, we can override fearful thoughts that were once impressed on our subconscious. Education of the imagination can help retrain our mind. Relaxing the mind and body also makes the mind more receptive to new positive suggestions. We make an impression on the subconscious mind by imagining a positive outcome and congratulating ourselves. In summary, the key points are, our subconscious mind responds to the thoughts we habitually think we receive guidance based on what we focus on overcoming fear involves facing fear, relaxation, and feeding the mind positive thoughts imagination and visualization help retrain the subconscious mind congratulating yourself and imagination makes an impression on the subconscious the law of the subconscious mind is compulsion. Whatever you impress upon the subconscious mind will compel you to express. Many fears and phobias originate from unpleasant experiences in childhood that become lodged in the subconscious mind. These can be overcome by consciously facing your fears and reprogramming your mind. A technique for overcoming fear is to imagine yourself confronting the fear and overcoming it. Repeat this frequently and your subconscious mind will be compelled to express confidence and courage in the actual situation. There are two kinds of fear, normal fear which alerts you to danger, and abnormal fear which arises from negative thoughts and beliefs lodged in the subconscious. Abnormal fear can be overcome by focusing on positive thoughts of love, peace and confidence. Most of our fears never come to pass. They exist only as thoughts in our mind. We must avoid indulging in fearful thoughts and feeding fear with our imagination and emotion. To overcome fear, engage in meditation and prayer to connect with the inner peace within you. This generates power and confidence to rise above difficulties and fear. Your mind has a conscious level where you reason at an unconscious or subconscious level with many latent fears, beliefs, and memories. You can release old fears and reframe your thinking by tapping into the subconscious. The key to overcoming fear is to avoid harmful and fearful thinking. Focus on positive, constructive thoughts, and connect with the inner peace within through meditation and prayer. This will reprogram your subconscious mind and change your mental-slash-emotional patterns. The key ideas are, the man had a deep sense of grief and unknown fears due to hating his father for years and developing deep guilt. This guilt and fear express themselves as physical ailments like migraine and sinusitis. Fear leads to pain, while love and goodwill lead to peace and health. The man realized his trouble was from his guilt, self-condemnation, and hatred that was poisoning him. He began to forgive himself and his father, releasing negative feelings. This helped cure his ailments. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord refers to the subconscious mind. Mastering techniques to work with the subconscious mind can free one from fear. Forgiveness and working to release negative emotions and guilt can help improve health and well-being. The story shows how letting go of hatred and fear helped cure the man's physical and emotional suffering. 
Book link click here.